Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, it is time again for DAX Fridays. Today we are going to talk about the sum of distinct values. So let me show you an example, this is much easier. So here we have our Power BI file, let's look at the data. Our data set is representing now a some kind of a bill of materials uh, where we have uh, parts repeating itself. And in this column, we have the cost for tooling for these parts. As you can see, uh, the part that is called band has a cost of 35. The case in 234 and the mechanism 1200. Now, what we would like to know is how much we are going to pay for tooling. So if we do like this, we put the parts there, make it bigger, which probably I would do it by default. Uh, and then we say, here I have a measure that is just the sum of the cost, if I put it there. Is this 1800 the right cost? What do you think? Let's look. So we're going to do exactly the same. A little bit bigger. And now we're going to put the index so it doesn't sum. And now we're going to put our total tooling costs. This we don't need there. So as you can see, we get the same result, 1800. But what he's doing is it's summon everything. So the, the cost for the band is only 35. It should not be 105. So we're going to pay for the tool only once, even if it's three times in there. And the same for the casing. The mechanism is only one time, so there's no problem and zero adds to zero, so that's not a problem either. But obviously this is giving us the wrong information. Now to get unique values, something that you could do if you're not interested in the sum is go in here. No, you cannot do it, but, but you can take these the no normal row, and then you can go in here and say don't summarize. But the problem with this is that it won't give you the sum. What we want to know is how much it will cost for us in total all this tooling. So this is a nice trick, but not a useful one for us. So we remove it. So how do we do the sum of the distinct part denominations. We don't want it to add it, we just want one time cost. So as we have learned before, um, to create the sum of something that is filtered by something else, we need to use sum x. If you don't really know what I'm talking about, make sure you check our sum sum x uh, video from a previous tax Friday. So you will see what I mean though then. So we need to use some X. Let's try to build that measure. We are going to call it, and that will be the sum X. And then we want to have distinct values for part denominations. And it is the sum. So, so let's try this out and see if it works. We put it in here and it's giving us the same result. Now, why is that? To understand what's happening in here, we need to understand how this sum x works again. So what it is doing is first, the first thing that happens in the stacks formula is that it goes through the first part and it chooses the distinct values for our part denomination column, which is are basically this, the band, the case in the mechanism and the screw. And then it filters the entire table for us. So it comes into what it could be this table. 
with all the parts, all the columns. So quantity is there also. And then it goes through it and it says, okay, for a band, uh, calculate the sum. So the sum will be again the sum of everything. For a casing, calculate the sum. And then it will give us the 468. For mechanism, only one. So it's basically doing the same thing. And then that's not what we wanted. What we want is when it comes to select span, here it doesn't appear three rows, only one appears because we want them to choose a distinct sum. So what we need to do is a way to modify these stacks formula. So it just gives us the one row. So this is what we're going to do to create the new measure. We are going to copy this one, create new measure. We're going to call it max sum of tool cost. And here we're going to add max table. And we want the max of the tooling budget costs, right? So let's see what happens. We put it in there. Do you think it will be correct? Pause and think. I'm dropping it. Okay. So it's giving us 4,936. Hmm. Even worse, right? So what's happening? Now, let's go through how this works again. So the first thing is giving us a distinct values for part nomination. So it's getting band, casing, mechanism, and screw memory, and then it's iterating through these. So it's going through the first one, band, and it says, okay, there are three rows. But now we told them, get the maximum of the entire table. So the maximum of the entire table is actually this one, 1,234. So it's given us 1,234 for every distinct count. So if you multiply 1,234 by 4, you will get 4,936. So this is not the correct way to do it either. What we need is the maximum of every single one of those. So we cannot calculate the maximum there because it will give us a maximum of the entire table. We need the maximum of every row. Okay. So for that, we're going to create a separate measure for the max of tooling costs. There we have it. And the difference between this is if we do like that, it will give us, of course, the maximum. But if we add the filter that we have, which is the part denomination, it's actually giving us the maximum for every part, which is exactly what we want. So we wanted to iterate through these and say, okay, this is 35. The maximum is 234. You see it. And zero. Okay. So let's try it again. We do a new measure. This thing count. The sum of x with our distinct uh, part denominations, and here we put our measure, which is the max of tooling costs. And remove the filter. 
Dun, 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 dun. And we finally got our distinct count of our part. Okay. Now, if you want, you can also get the correct. Um, this is not count. This is some the the correct distinct sum by using values instead of distinct. I don't know if this more effective or not, but both of them work. So quite a sweat, right? <laughs> Just did such a simple thing. Um, what I've shown you today is the way I normally create my DAX expressions. I start with what I would like to do and I try different things and then uh, some things I say, oh, oof, that was not exactly what I expected. You try to understand why it wasn't and then you correct until you actually get the actual value. The more you practice in DAX, the more you will get your measures correctly because you will be able to visualize how things are being filtered in the background and how things are being calculated. But this is a perfectly fine approach. You just say, okay, I would like to do this and you build it step by step. I want to have this thing in the count and then I want to have unique values here and then I have to have a measure outside or inside as we've done and just try an error and try to understand every time you don't get the results you get why it's happening because that is the way you will learn DAX in my experience. Great! So this is all for today. Uh, it's been actually great fun to do these uh, DAX Fridays. I really hope you enjoy them too because uh, I've been uh, learning and refining my DAX and hopefully you've been doing the same. If you like this video, let me know by liking it. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, just let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels. Be social please and share. Uh, it will help this channel grow and have a fabulous evening. Bye!